What's going on guys? Welcome back. We've given away two multi-process aluminum welders within the last two months. We got two more to go. Stick around. This is the latest in the giveaway series, guys. This one's gonna be given away in January, and I'm gonna show you here in a few seconds on how to get in on the ones that are currently going. This is a 200 amp, six in one process, multi-welder. It does aluminum, MIG, TIG, stick. It's fully synergic, and it's got manual modes, and it's also dual voltage. It'll go 120 and 240. And this welder is also capable of hooking up a spool gun and welding aluminum. We're gonna be testing this out here today and seeing just what this thing can do. And it comes with a lot of accessories that a lot of welders in this price category don't come with. So we're gonna cut right to the chase, guys. If you wanna know how to get in on these giveaways, head over to my YouTube channel, go to my page, click on videos, and that's gonna give you a list of videos. What you're looking for are thumbnails that look like this and have the word official in them. You can see here, that's giveaway number four. And we'll scroll down through. That one's currently going on. Giveaway number three. That one's currently going on. Those are the two current giveaways that you have right now. Then what you do is watch those videos, listen to what's being said within it, and then follow the instructions to make sure that you're entered. It's that easy. Giveaway number three is gonna be given away in December. Giveaway number four is gonna be given in January. And I'm gonna be announcing really soon other giveaways in between those two dates. We're gonna be giving away some gear. So stay tuned for that. So let's get into this video. We're gonna start testing this out. We're gonna test for amperage, but guys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell notification so that you will know when these things are drawn and when they're gonna be given away. Make sure you're following me on the, all the other social media pages because I'm gonna be announcing it everywhere. It would be a shame for someone to win this and not claim it in the allotted time. You've got like four days to get a hold of me after this. And so that we're clear, guys, I do not reach out to anyone telling them that they won. So if someone reaches out to you and asks you to contact them or they tell you in the comment section that you won or any other thing, that is not me. I'm not doing that. I announce the winner on the day and time that I say within the video, and that's that. I don't deviate from it. The winner has an allotted amount of time to get a hold of me, not the other way around. Just so we're clear. So if you want to know all the features, you want to get on the giveaway on this video, guys, just go watch that video. It's going to be giveaway number four. It comes with a lot of accessories. I go over all of them in that episode. We're not doing that here today. I'm going to move these aside because we are going to start doing some testing on this welder. So far, guys, I've been super impressed with this machine, but I see a slight problem. Not a huge problem, but a problem that can be fixed and remedied. And let me explain it to you and show it to you. Okay, so this welder comes with here in the United States. This is like 110, 120 volt uh, plug. This is what we have for, you know, like 220. This would be our typical welder plug. The problem that I see here is that this should have a welder plug on it. So it should have this end on it not that end. The reason I say that guys is this is the adapter that you get with this machine, okay? So you plug this machine in to 220. Now I've got 220 on this plug right now, okay? That's a problem. So this 120 volt grinder guys will plug right into this line now that's on 220 volts. That's a problem. Uh, that's gonna destroy this, gonna burn it up instantly. So my solution to this would be cut this end off by a male plug, a 220 welder plug, put it on the end of this, and then use a 220 to 120 adapter. So you can see how this works now, right? I, I could plug this into a regular 110 receptacle. Only 110 is gonna come out of that. That's it. So if I plugged, a welder into the end of this, the welder is only going to run on 110. It's not going to burn it up. As opposed to being plugged into a 220 outlet, having 220 at the 110 side, then plugging your grinder into that or your welder or whatever else. Easy fix, just cut that off, put a different plug on it. Then pick you up one of these 220 to 120 volt adapters. Another solution, and I'm not telling you to do this, guys. Again, these are just for educational purposes only, you could cut off this end of this plug 
open up this case, take the connections off where this wire is going through, and then wire this into your machine. It'd be a short little plug coming out of it, but then this would be what's sticking out of your machine, and then that's safe. That wouldn't be a problem. So you can do this without really buying anything. Other than you'd need to pick up the female 220 to 120 volt adapter. That's it. I'm not sure how much this is. This is probably maybe 20 bucks. So it is possible to do it this way, guys. And I will talk to these folks about this, guys. I'm sure this may be something that's already been corrected in the meanwhile. Maybe they've already uh, kind of already taken care of this. But uh, like I say, I will bring this up to them because it is kind of a safety issue having it rigged up this way. So back to what we were doing. We're gonna plug in our 220 volt plug into 220. Now I'm gonna plug our welder into that so we'll have 220 volts at the welder. I'm curious what this puts out for amperage on the display versus its advertised amperage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a clamp on amp meter today and we're gonna test this at its maximum amperages to see if we're somewhere within that, uh, within that range. The one thing that I mentioned in last week's episode that I really liked about this welder is that it has an on-demand fan. The fan only turns on when it's needed and it doesn't just run constantly. Most welders, you just turn them on, the fan stays running. Uh, the only other welder that I've seen do this, and I know there are a few others that do uh, work this way as well, is my Fronius. And uh, that's kind of nice. I love it. The Fronius just sits there quietly. Uh, you can start welding. You can weld for a few minutes. And then eventually it'll start turning on once it senses that it uh, is starting to heat up and it needs some cooling. And then as soon as it's cooled off, it turned, the fan turns back off. So it's really nice. So if you know fan sounds and buzzing irritate you, you'll really like this unit. It's nice and quiet. Fan turns on for a few seconds at the beginning, then it shuts right off. And there we go. Nice and quiet again. Now all the consumables that come with this machine, I'm leaving them in the package. You can see I've taken them right out of my workspace. I've put them in the shipping box that the winner is going to receive. I'm going to use all of my consumables, my, you know, my earth, my stinger, um, the MIG gun, all of that. Your consumables will be all packaged up nice. I'm not using any of them. So I think the first thing we're going to do is get this into stick welding mode. And we do that by pressing the mode button right here. So you can see we've got TIG. MIG spool gun, MIG just with a MIG gun, then we've got stick welding right there. One other thing that I forgot to mention, you've got nine different presets where you can set your voltage, amperage, and everything else for any specific material or material thickness size. So that's kind of handy to have. Press this button right here on the front, then turn it on. It has really good directions. Turn it on on the back and it's gonna say P1. As Soon as it says P1, we let off the button. There we go. Then we select the mode. We're going to store it for stick. Then we go to our manual. So P1 is background parameter initialization. So to restore factory defaults. P3 setting would be VRD switch. So it's either going to be, uh, it says zero is off, one is on. So what VRD is, is I'm not going to get too technical on this, but you can turn it on or off in this machine and it's re a voltage reduction device. And what that basically does is that the machine senses that when it's just sitting here idling, not doing anything, that it reduces the open voltage of the machine just so that when it's sitting there idling, the voltage is a lot lower. It just prevents electrocution. So when would you want to do that? Maybe if you were like working in the rain around, around water or anything like that, it just, when the machine's kind of like idling, it just lowers that voltage until it's ready to be used. And it's all done electronically and automatically. That's what that is. But you can turn it off and on through these parameter settings. And this is also where you'd set your arc force, your arc current, and your arc uh, ignition time. So like your hot start. So like I say, this has really good instructions, really good manual. It even shows you welding technique, which I thought was kind of unusual but really handy okay even shows you some uh, technique for forehand backhand just an all-around pretty good manual I'm impressed so I'm gonna leave it with the default settings guys I just wanted you to know that if you needed to change the settings or increase something or decrease it for any given one of these processes there's a way to do it in here and you can store it then pressing that button again 
puts it back in and saves that preset. We're going to use some 8th inch 70-24 jet rod. Normally you'd have this right around probably 125 amps or so. Maybe 130, 140 in that area. Uh, but we're going to crank her up to 200. We're not really looking uh, to get a pretty weld. We're just looking to see if the, the whatever it displays on the screen, I think this is rated for 180 on stick mode, see if we're getting that actually at the stinger. The way we're going to test this is I've got a clamp on amp meter. I'll explain to you briefly how this works. This opens up, you clamp it around the wire like that, and it picks up how much amperage is being drawn through that wire. We would clip it on to our stinger just like this. Now we just got to set the machine, get everything going. I got to get on some safety gear and we'll see what this thing reads compared to the output display. Now on this setting, so stick welding, our amperage goes from 20 right there up to I think 180. 180, yeah, that's correct. That's on, that's when it's on 220 volts. So for those of you that might not have 220 volts in your workshop, here are the parameters for that. So on, you know, 110 volt, it says this will go from 20 amps to 135. That's on, you know, stick welding mode. And these are the parameters for TIG, same thing. TIG on 110, uh, 220. This is the 110 column for MIG. And then on 220, duty cycle. Well, that's impressive. 60% duty cycle. So out of a 10-minute cycle, you can weld constant for 6 minutes straight before you got to take a 4-minute break uh, to allow the machine to cool down. I'm using an 8th inch 7024 rod. And we're going to see if the display here matches this. I'm not doing this set for max amps. So I'll have to actually zoom the camera in and we'll have to take a look and see what this actually reads versus what it's reading here. It's re well, it's reading 180 on the display. So we'll see if it reads 180 on this. What I really like, guys, is notice how no fan sound right now. This machine's ready to go. As soon as I strike this arc, then the fan will start. That's exactly how my Fronius works as well. Alright guys, we'll do the same thing now, except I'm going to use a 8th inch 7018, see if that makes a difference. I took a little glance over, it looks like it was between like 162 to 165 area. So that's not a huge big deal guys, it's about 15 amps off, that's within like 10%. Not a big deal, I'd like to see see a little bit closer to 180, but uh, still for a welder in this range, that's not bad. I I'm actually pretty happy. Let's test this and see if it's that close on like the 120 volt. So we were just on 220. Let's test it on 120 and then we're going to test other processes too and just see how accurate this machine is compared to its display. I just unplugged it off 220, now I'm plugging it into 120. Alright, let's see what we get here. And it maxes out at 135 amps. This meter should be reading right around 135 amps when it's on 120 volt power. All right, time for some math, guys. We've got our calculations for a 220 volt and our calculations for a 120 volt. On 220 volt, we had the machine set at 180 amps. We saw roughly 165, between 161 and 165. So I just rounded it to 165, called it a 15 uh, amp drop. So that's 8.3% less than, uh, than a, what, what it's supposed to read. Same thing for 120 volt. It, the display was reading 135 amps and we were getting about 124 amps out of it on the reading. So that's 11 amp reduction for 8.1% less. 
So that's not a crazy huge difference it's within like a 10%, so we're good there. The next process I want to test for is MIG, and I'll be using all my whip and all my stuff. I've got the machine all switched over. We're going to be doing MIG on 240 volts. For wire, I'm using 30 thousandths flux core, and we are going to just try to max this machine out. I really like the design of everything inside. I haven't seen any issues. Everything is all metal. Uh, it's all steel construction. You can see how this inlet right here of where it goes up into the whip is real close to the drive roll which that's a good thing because that's going to help prevent any bird nesting. We'll plug it in to 240 volts. We'll set our mode right here so it's on stick, TIG, that's MIG spool gun, that's regular MIG, that's what we want right there. Now we'll set our wire size, so 0.8 which is 30 thousandths wire. So this size wire it's only going to allow you to go to 160 amps and let's see if we go to the next wire size up that will allow you to get to 180 amps now we got to set our gas and we're on flux core now if you pull the trigger on this and hold the trigger down it has which is called inching if you do it without the gas on so this will actually feed it out through the mig gun liner a lot faster you see the display going faster and you can hear it increase. And there it is right there. We're reading 160 amps on the display. Let's see how close it reads on the meter. That's hot guys, that's basically just about melted the uh, the nozzle on this MIG gun. So for me, as a consumer, that's what's important to me, whether or not this machine will put out its advertised amperage. Anyone can a advertise a machine as being capable of doing X, you know, X, Y, Z, and then you actually use it and it's only putting out half of what it's saying. So this machine maxes out uh, at 160 with that wire size and we saw 160 on the meter. So I'm impressed overall so far, guys. This machine has done uh, what it said it's gonna do. It's within like 8% on stick welding. It seems to be spot on on MIG welding. So yeah, I'm real happy with this machine. It seems to be built well. Just looks like a good unit for the price. Let's mess with the spot feature. And so to get it into spot mode, you just toggle down, so that's 4T, that's spot mode right there. And the way this works on spot mode is you basically just make contact like you normally would, pull the trigger and hold it, and it will just stay lit for the amount of time programmed into the machine that you program. I'm just using the stock programming right now, but you can adjust it and change it to whatever you want. So watch how this works. So I'm gonna pull the trigger and hold it, and I'm gonna continue to hold it, and it'll just stop after a period of time. Now I'm going to do it in rapid succession, okay? So if you were stitching together a body panel or something, you see how all this time duration is all identical? So all your spots would be perfect. I'm not even focusing. I'm just pulling the trigger and moving ahead. Pretty cool, huh, guys? A lot of people aren't aware that an alternative to a spool gun, if your machine doesn't have this provision here, is you can actually take off the whip, put in a graphene liner, and you can actually push aluminum wire through your MIG gun. And if you want to know the detailed steps of exactly how to do it, I just did it to this Hobart, and I'll have a link up above and down below, and you guys can check it out. But it's a pretty interesting video. If you don't want to go out and spend a couple of hundred bucks on a spool gun, you can spend about 25 bucks on a liner, and you can start MIG welding aluminum. And you're also going to need some argon gas. Just something to consider if you don't want to go out and spend a couple hundred bucks on a spool gun. And I've got some good news. Art Captain reached out to me in an email, and for the next 60 days, viewers that buy this welder through the link down below are going to get a free pair of gloves thrown in. Free gloves for the next 60 days. 
If you want to get 5% off your order, use promo code Brandon Lund. And I'm going to be giving away five rolls of wire in an upcoming giveaway. So be sure to stay tuned for that. That's kind of awesome. They clearly watch the video. They enjoy what I'm doing on this channel. And uh, they like the concept of me giving back. So And they want to give back a little bit as well. And I'm fully in support of that. So if you want some free gloves for the next 60 days, pick up some equipment. Use the link down below. That's going to get you the gloves. 5% off using the promo code. What do you got to lose? And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using, you can check the links down below. Make sure you subscribe to all my other social media pages because that's where I announce uh, the winners to these giveaways. Like I said, it'd be a shame to win this and not be notified of it and not know. So make sure you got the notifications turned on here and that you're subscribed to the channel. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, like, comment, subscribe. See ya. Oh, and if you want to get in on the giveaway of this machine, I'll have the link to that down below. This one is going to be giveaway number four. This one's going to be given away in January. So go watch that video, listen to what it's got to say, follow the instructions, and you're in. Until next week, guys, I'll see you then. See ya.